What's up guys? Welcome back to Faded Truth. Before you do anything, hit that subscribe button, support your girl. And today I have a very special guest. I got the honey with the honey on Buzz the show. Miss <laughs> Jodeci. We taking it back. Jodeci Gonzalez in the building. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> How you feeling? Oh, I'm mighty high. Super <laughs> I love this, this tooth. Thank you. Jewelry. It's a 24 karat um, yellow gold Gucci bumblebee. Okay, nice. So founder and CEO of Jade, Jodeci's alternative daily enhancements. So you basically own and created a licensed luxury brand elevating with cannabis education, mm -hmm. branding, promotional solutions, and community advocacy. Absolutely. It says you're focusing on empowering the minds of humankind to decrease the use of opioids across the nation through holistic approaches to daily living and plant-based products stemming from cannabis. Yes. So you got a lot going on. You started this in the pandemic, 2020. Yeah. But then also I want to know why is the opioid epidemic important to you in with this? So... For sure. So um, I s relaunched Jade with products in October of 2020. I'm coming out with a plant-based honey, and it's a medical-grade honey. It's CBG-infused, and I really was searching for, like, skincare products because I was dealing with a lot of scarring coming from the Midwest and moving to the desert. I was developing skincare issues, but not only that, I was also on lots of medicines um, like gabapentin and Celexa for some of my um, nerve issues as well. So pain management as well as uh, mental health. And so cannabis was something that I had used for since I was... 10 years old the first time I smoked a blunt I was 10 years old and I always like dabbled ar around in <laughs> cannabis and then I like smoking weed but it was so different back then because it was like ooh, like it was so bad in the midwest um, I thought you were gonna say you had scars from riding cowboys or riding horses <laughs> no <laughs> no I didn't get to bail hay and stuff like that <laughs> thankfully that wasn't my scene but and so it's um is it still criminalized in Indiana? Yeah, it's definitely much so criminalized. Um, Illinois is decriminalized. I'm from Chicago and um, growing up out there, I mean, I'm really from the hood out there. We, my parents, um, which brought me to the opioid piece, um, they're actually addicted to opioids. And my father died of an addiction from opioids and my mom's battling when, with one um, as we speak. So I just have a voice for them, um, voice for loved ones. When I was a professional in human resources as a nursing coordinator, I um, saw a lot of my nurses that I was hiring also become fired because of an opioid addiction that they would build. Um, so it was just all around me. Indiana was swarmed with opioids uh, addictions. Everyone was having like hep C or some weird stuff going on. And it all stemmed from pills. And I noticed while I was taking pills, um, I was not myself. I was zombified or I wasn't able to live free. Right. So it was important for me, um, you know, to come over to Las Vegas where cannabis was legalized. And I started becoming a, uh, I started in the industry as a bud tender, made my way up to management. I can definitely see you bud tending. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the medical part of it because I've always helped people um, in independent living, whether they had a mental health issue, like, or maybe they were blind or deaf or um, maybe they just needed somebody to help them throughout the day. And so that's something that I always carried. And in my lifetime, I've always been a community mentor and advocate. So it was important for me to like infuse everything, bud tending and mental health and um, plant-based products. I had lost a hundred pounds twice by using cannabis and incorporating a plant-based diet. So I a hundred pounds, a hundred pounds, girl, buzz, where buzz. did you put, what the fuck? Get out of here. <laughs> yes. I was 230 can pounds. Her? I hope y'all can see her. Cause she looks skinny. She looked right. Talking about a hundred. Yes. Where the fuck did it go? I was 230 pounds. <gasps> like, so you used fifth, cannabis to lose weight? Hell yeah. And it was a study at first. And when I first did it, I was, I dropped weight like quick. And then I stopped for about two years and everything that I lost, I put right back on. 
Because people uh, usually get munchies when they smoke. Yes, so but how it's did all you about use it terpenes. To... Terpenes and the cannabinoids. Did so like, it um, shift your appetite then when yeah, you used it? Yeah, it sped or... up my metabolism. And honestly, it was just because there's a terpene like humulene and there's a couple of other terpenes that definitely help like stimulate your appetite or um, enhance your appetite. So it's really nice to have those types of terpenes in your in your cannabis and as we grow as an industry, we're learning about different pieces of weed. It's not just weed anymore. I used to buy dime bags and it was either mids or loud. <laughs> we just had Reggie. It was Reg, just like Reggie right. for your whole teen years. And then, yeah. Yeah, and then they're like, you smoking that kush? Kush. You got that dank? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what brought me to just healing people. Um, honey was sweet just because I... I have a sweet tooth, but everything in our dispensaries is brownies or sugars or gummies, things that didn't actually break down in our body. And I try to have more of a vegan-based diet. And this honey that I have is actually a vegan honey. Um, not all honey is vegan. They usually harm bees in the process of like extracting. So my honey is vegan. Um, they preserve the bees. They're very rare bees. And it comes from a bush that um, has the healing properties. So it's really Shit. neat. Okay, so I, first I want to um, say I'm sorry for your loss with your father. Um, my brother died of opioids mm. uh, while well, heroin. He started on opioids, but it's still an opiate. Is it considered yeah, opiate I heroin? Think so. so he got addicted when he was like 17, you know, and then his whole life he died at 40 from heroin. So um, I actually never got into learning about drug addiction mm -hmm. until I started the podcast. And wow. one of my first guests was Sober Junkie. Yeah. You know him? I know Sober Junkie. Yeah, he was one of my first or guests. I love him. Yeah. So um, that's when I actually started being more open minded to the thing that, like, with mental health and learning that these things are really addictions for people and that they're, you know, they're mm -hmm. sick and that you can actually cure, you know, people with cannabis. So Absolutely. Sober Junkie's story was he was a heroin addict, overdosed eight times, and he wow. literally. Survive. He he came clean off cannabis. He's a cat. Nine lives. It's crazy. So, um, <laughs> cheers to our loved ones yes. in heaven due to addiction. It's not a fucking. It's not a joke, you know. So if you know anyone struggling, just talk to them. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Pick their brain. Check on them. Go up to the house. Make sure they're living right because they yeah. don't tell you they are and they're not. So, For sure. You know. So I I appreciate that that you even are putting that into your business. I think that's awesome. The healing honey. Um, CBG enriched manuka honey, right? Yes. What is CBG? CBG is the mother cannabinoid to our cannabis plant. So it gives you all of the properties of anti-inflammatory and anti-hysmectomy, um, antibacterial. So everything um, that you get from CBD, from CBN, from THC, you get in CBG, but you don't get the psychoactivity. So you find yourself, I call it the full entourage effect. You get the full plant experience, which is what a lot of people um, who use cannabis as medicine is really looking for, like a full spectrum um, product. I want to, I, first I want to roll up this weed. Yes. So I've been waiting to roll this up for you. So I want to talk about this leaf you got going, how this is special, because this looks for special. Sure. So it it's comes in like special. that. It's not wet yet. It comes in like this. Uh, no, actually, w like when I get it, it's a, a frontal leaf from Ecuador. And it's this big ass leaf. And I hand wash it. And then I super cleanse it with my water cleansing solution, which is a very more pure of not a purified, but a clean water. So I <laughs> then drizzle the honey on there. So you can smoke it or you can use it as a Band-Aid because the honey is used in wound care. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so now Sexy. are you, do you split this to roll it or do you roll the whole thing? I split it. Okay. I, I, it I didn't know. I was like, damn, I don't know. You get like I got to go upstairs and get another, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you, honestly, when you get, um, have this smoke, it's just a holistic method or a holistic wrap to enjoy your exotic smoke um or as a topical aid so it's a slow burn it's a cigar burn if you like backwoods you'll definitely like these you just cut them along the veins like you would a backwood so i just take just a piece of it that's all you need 
and then you can put it back, put it in the fridge, preserve it. Okay, how long will that last, do you think? I've had some last for about 60, 90 days. And now with uh, this, is there tobacco in it? So the nice thing about the um, Healing Honey Leaf, so it's an all-natural Ecuadorian frontal leaf, which is an all-natural tobacco leaf. But the nice thing about it, there's no additives. So unlike, you know, your Dutches or your Swishers, White Owls, I don't, I'm a blunt girl. Like those are the, those are my wraps, but they have additives, added flavors in them. They have the nicotine mm -hmm. in them. So that's what makes it poisonous. This is just a holistic method. So they actually use these tobacco leaves in medicine way back when. Okay. Like our ancestors did for sure. So is tobacco what causes the cancer or the nicotine? The nicotine. Okay. So they actually use, you can, um, what they used to do back in the day is in tribes, they would, it was so dope. They would actually boil the the leaf and have them drink it in their tea. Mm. And it would help with their um, stomach issues. Isn't uh, that interesting? I just love like learning about natural medicine. Yeah. Because it's crazy that like our our world thinks that we're supposed to be taking these pills. Mm -hmm. So that's when I learned about the plants over pills movement was when, Oh yeah. Um, Cause I got sober junkie from David Irving. Okay, cool. So he was like my first, one of my first guests and he was talking about how, why he quit and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, you're right. Like they really want to give us all this shit and tell us to take it and be okay. But like, you could be just doing something herbal and right. healing your body. Right. She's rolling a honey blunt right now. Yes. And then, so you also have the Healing Honey Hammock, which That's is right here. That's so sexy. This is the Tobacco Free. Yes. Okay, banana leaf, glass tip. And a hemp wick. Ooh. This look tribal. <laughs> it is. It's hella tribal. <laughs> it says you provide care companions as well. Yeah. What does so that mean? Part of empowering the minds of humankind. Um, I was spending, I remember I was spending hundreds on seeing a therapist and I still felt like they weren't listening to me or sometimes in our lives we just need somebody to literally just help us. Maybe it's like doing the dishes or just helping us learn to live independently. Maybe we don't have a lifestyle, like a, a life skill that we want to learn. Maybe we don't have a social skill. And so what we do is there's different categories so we can maybe paint and talk or maybe it's just talking without doing any kind of activity maybe it's meal prepping um maybe it's going on a hike together i have emotional support animals so and they're certified to work with those with ptsd wow. so people can rent them so it's just different holistic uh methods to living that the personal care companion part of jade um, focuses on. We just try to encourage uh, holistic business growth and um, promotions and just being real because I found in a lot of like social medias or in business um, promotions, it was believing in the hype. And I'm trying to change that stigma too. It's like it's it, businesses grow naturally. Like Amazon wasn't Amazon. <laughs> six years ago like my aunt was ordering penny fucking movies from amazon and i was it looked completely different um when i was in high school to even now and i've only been out of high school since 2011 10 years so it's like so many things change but we often get caught up in that hype stuff right. and i just wanted to show people the truth behind businesses and have a truthful long-lasting business so i like to do um I'm not a photographer. People keep saying I'm a photographer. You That's were taking a... pictures at that event. Yeah, <laughs> like it's just a hobby. <laughs> like I'm not good. I'm not a photographer. I don't want that title. Yeah, that, but was, I definitely a, that promote. was a fun. That was a fun event. I love to support different events and I love to support my friends. So I like I'll definitely promote. Where'd you get the whole like bee thing from? Like, did you like bees or did you only like them because they make the honey? Like, how did it come together? I've always been a nature goddess. Um, bees have never bothered me. I do believe I was uh, stung by a bee when I was a little girl. And I do believe they've given me some like bee powers. <laughs> <laughs> I just really appreciated like what bees uh, do for our community as far as like pollinating and um, 
I mean, they they help with our allergies and they're going actually through like a bee crisis. And I thought it was beautiful how bees actually can pollinate medicine. They're saving us. So it's like, we got to save the bees. I really loved like Manuka honey because Manuka honey like is actually like a skincare product and it's beautiful. Like it's all natural, super exotic. Um, they preserve the bees. The bees only work two out of two to six weeks out of the year. And that's very much like me. I'm very whimsical. <laughs> I just really resonate with being a bee, a life of a bee, you know. Buzz um, buzz. <laughs> and I think, yeah, exactly. Buzz buzz. <laughs> and I have, it kind of like the whole buzz buzz and a bee kind of resonates with me as a personality. Like I can, I think so many people think like bees are beautiful um, and what they do are beautiful, but they can sting, right? And I feel like I'm a strong, independent woman and I can sometimes sting and I've stung people in a room and not necessarily like to be mean, but maybe they were threatening me or, you know, but I keep going. <laughs> I keep She's like, I'm buzzing. pretty and crazy, bitch. Yeah. Aren't we all? Yep. Okay. So the swarm in, roll up, let's pollinate. Mm -hmm. That's the quote. I always try to incorporate those words. Okay. Mm, I think it's cute. Branding. And, and then the holistic beauty kits. Yes. They combat scars. Absolutely. Okay. So what comes in the beauty kits? It's the my water. Yeah. The and honey then, and then the my water. Okay. Gotcha. And so are these products sold in dispensaries? Not yet. I'm working with a couple right now, like uh, with a couple of buyers. Okay. And uh, doing a couple presentations. So I was scared before. I don't know why, but I'm ready now. There you go, mama. Yes. Thank you. It's a very light, smooth hit. It's a little skimper. But on the East Coast, these are really um, famous. Like, as far as the Frontos and then the Spliffs. I do have one other product, but I actually uh, sold out this weekend at the Juneteenth Bottega Exchange event. What I do is I put our uh, a piece of rice paper with a strip of our leaf in their spliff wood. So people who like graba or just a little bit of tobacco in their joints, they can have that option too. I don't ever use I don't ever use honey for anything. I know a lot of people use it for tea and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I never. It just tastes like, it honestly tastes like a blunt, right? <laughs> a little sweeter, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> and I roast it, and that's been sitting in there, you know. Um, like I said, it's not like dunked in honey. It's drizzled on there, so that way there's a, that delicate touch. So what do you think for people that maybe are on these opioids or that just are not into holistic things, mm -hmm. you know, because I feel like to be holistic, you also have to be a little bit spiritually open. Yeah. Right. And because it kind of goes hand in hand. I think so. So if you're and closed minded, you might not think these products are going to work for you. So where do you think is a first step for people that haven't tried any holistic practice, but you know, they want to get healthier. What do you think is the first step for them? Do you think it's CBD, THC, like honey? What do you think they should be incorporating? So at first I'm going to say, be the change that you want to see. Um, and that's what holistics is all about is just changing your normal routine and thinking in an alternative matter. Um, and I think that's really important. So if somebody does want to get into like plant-based or especially cannabis, I would say definitely try like a one-to-one -one tincture or a patch, something that gives you the full cannabis experience. I personally love smoking, um, but not everybody is for smoking, but if they want some, if they really want to try, I definitely say sublinguals. They're truly, truly captivating and life changing. Um, one sublingual that I would definitely recommend is City Trees. They have amazing tinctures. You can't really taste it. You don't feel anything. Um, they do have different flavors. If uh, like you want mint or orange, those are really cool to have. Um, it just spices up some. Like right. magic in your mouth, yeah. <laughs> magic in your mouth. Shining with the gold. Buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz. Okay, so what do you think is your best just life advice to anybody? If you had to give them one thing to stick by and to live by, what are you going to tell them? You can do it. Like, you can do everything that you want to do and just keep going. 
you know, but you have to be able to embrace the dog. You have to be able to look in the mirror and take accountability for what is going on in your life and be willing to turn over a new leaf. <laughs> <laughs> she got all the puns ready. <laughs> Swarm into relief. Nice. I'm glad that I had another female entrepreneur on here. It's really honestly hard to get females. I feel like I'm all my well, I know all my viewers are male, but all my yes. all my um guests have usually been I've only had maybe a handful of females. Mm. So I'm trying to get more cannabis related, holistic related interviews on the show, you know, because oh, nice. I started the brand I started the brand to promote like to get the stigma away from cannabis before I even knew what it could really do for people. Mm -hmm. Like I was just like, you can't look at me like a pothead because like, you know, this is my, this is what I do. Yeah. But I didn't realize it was like helping people and it yeah. probably helps me a little. But if I don't smoke, it's like, just stay the fuck away from me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I get like that too. I'm just, I'm very to myself. I can thrive by myself, but in social spaces, I do like to smoke cannabis. Like, I love weed. I've always loved weed, though. Like, it's always been something in my family. Smoking has been part of my culture since forever. Like, we've smoked hookah growing up. We smoked, I saw blunts always being passed, joints always being passed, some other shit being passed. <laughs> right. But, um, I mean, I smoked black and milds for the longest time, which is so <laughs> terrible. Did you do the wood tips? <laughs> um, I did both. But I used to like the wood tips. Yeah. <laughs> I, w I would go back and forth because I would get tired of the taste of like just one or the other. So that's how much I smoked blacks. And that's why I wanted to provide a cigar. Like I think cigars are just very high class. Um, and these are just an exotic smoke, you know, and you can do a little cigar. You can do a big cigar. The most I've rolled in here was 14 grams. Are you a part of the chamber of cannabis? Yes, the Chamber of Cannabis, that's what I was going to say, too. They would really put you on with, like, some of the best women in the cannabis industry. Well, I have Tina tomorrow. Oh, Tina's the bomb. She definitely has um, women's back. She's definitely all about women empowerment, for sure. For sure. So you're a member of it? Yeah, I'm a member. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. So tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing, or is it just that you show up to the event? Um, so I definitely do more than show up to the events I want to be used. And that was a big reason why I built Jade as well, because I knew it would be able to impact the community in a way that, um, w was just in a unique way. And I, I remember seeing the chamber start in November of 2020, although I believe they actually launched in October of 2020. And I saw that they were all about community inclusivity, womanhood, <laughs> um, and cannabis. So I thought that was dope. So I joined them at the end of 2020, like December. But, so this year, I will say from a standpoint of being a member and then growing into positions with them, like now I help with promotions with them and um, hopefully soon I'll be um, onto some more things with them. So yeah, I'm um, excited. I'm we excited just, to see yeah. all the, everything they're doing because the fact that yeah. there's a like a chamber of cannabis is it's, just insane. It's insane, and I I've it's never huge. got into the political side of it, and now I'm starting to learn it. And it's like it's social equity huge. and cannabis and all these things. It's just crazy. Yeah, the fact that we were able to you know get AB three forty one passed um, for uh, the cannabis consumption lounges as well as AB 400 for the cannabis DUI reformation was huge. Cause I was impacted by the cannabis DUI laws, um, that currently are in state and was, um, in jail for it. The science behind it was just actually dumb. It didn't make sense. Right. Like it, it just, there, there wasn't a great algorithm to really say that somebody's high or impaired because I think it was like two mammograms or something so minute that made no sense. Because, I mean, we have more than that in our system now. Right. It was, uh, it was kind of unfair. So then you go to, you get arrested for what, driving while high or they found weed? Like how did, what happened? Oh, with me? Um, so I actually, I, ha I worked in the cannabis industry, so I always had weed on me like everywhere but I also um 
I mean, I'll be honest. Yeah, I smoked and drive, you know, or smoke and drove. Um, out in Vegas or was it? Yeah, it was oh, out wow. in Vegas for sure. And I'm always, um, I have blunts I, just waiting in my house. Yeah, <laughs> I had them in my ashtray. Like mm-hmm. there was definitely evidence, you right. know, my Hardeen bag, like had exit bags, but had pens everywhere. I mean, I'm a manager at a dispensary. What do you expect? I'm a badass. Leave me alone. Right. I was like, I'm a walking billboard. Can I but, uh, roll this? Yes, please. Okay. That one really roasted it because the honey is super smothered on that. So it that's why we got moist. the glass tip? Yeah. To make it easier? I think I need glass tips for anything that's like... It's way better to inhale. It's just, yeah, it's easier. It's a clean inhalation. Ooh, oh, it does have honey on it. Okay. Honey, honey. Yeah. Buzz, buzz over here. The honey on it actually gives you the full entourage effect because the CBG, so it like enhances the high. Wait, so what happens with the with the cops? Oh, um, yeah, I just ended up getting a DUI. and Oh, they actually charge you with a DUI? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, and then so what does the paperwork say? Does it say like possession or under the influence of marijuana like how do they describe the it driving okay. under the influence gotcha yeah. and then they just listed like uh well my oh, jesus i told on myself i didn't what? know how to speak to cops <laughs> like i was like yeah i had a couple drinks so it just i made it worse on myself right but i was, he was being like honest but i wasn't impaired i was just ditzy like and then i had just lit a blunt too the cop was on a fucking bike jesus it was ridiculous it was ridiculous you don't even have a fucking like jelly story you're like like, he was on a bike i told on myself (laughs) yeah like come on so did you get it dismissed or you you got the actual no um I actually got a charge. I, I pled like no contest, just took whatever the state gave me because I just felt pressured to do that. And I didn't, I, I've never really like, I, I don't think that my parents or my community gave me an opportunity to understand what my rights are. Mm-hmm. And so I always thought it was good to be honest. Like, and that's some genuine ass shit. Like, so I, I didn't think that telling him the truth, like, oh, I had a, a couple of cocktails and then. Did they give like, you a uh, sobriety test, though? Yeah, at the jail. OK. And I was at the legal limit. Yeah, I, I definitely was when I got pulled over in Jersey, I was um, le- I left the club. It was like we had a whole party. So I'm like bottles in and i'm like five i live five minutes from the club right so i'm like all right you know i'm just gonna drive home normal like always because i'm like not impaired so i always have a blunt waiting in the car so as soon as i get in the car i like the blunt Mm -hmm. and like from the city to my city it's like literally a mile but the city next to it is like hood so they don't give a fuck and then my city was like bougier so they just like wait on the street like Mm -hmm. on the corner where like it turns into the next city and they wait for people to go so i'm like speeding you know, going fucking 50 on the beach. And they're like, so they put their lights on. I, I like didn't want to throw the blunt out because I was scared. So right. I put it out in the ashtray. Right. And it's just like sitting in the middle. And then so I pull into Wawa. You know what Wawa is? No. Oh, it's a North uh, East Coast thing. So it's like a little fucking supermarket. So I pull into Wawa. They fucking make me do a sobriety test. I pass in flying colors. I'm in like five inch heels. Fuck what? up. And I'm like doing the walk or whatever. They didn't blow me or else I would have failed. Yeah. So the guy was like, you, you smell like like alcohol, but like you, uh, he's like, but you just seem fine. He like didn't even smell weed yet. So the other cop that comes behind, you know, because they got they need multiple. Yeah. Because they bored. So he comes and like he could smell the weed in my car. So he's just like walking around my car and he's like, um, he's like, we need to search your car. So they bring the dogs and the fucking dogs find my blood. They found like, I used to sell edibles and pens in Jersey from Cali because oh nobody had them over there. Yeah. So years ago it was like, I would just sell them at the bar at the club. Mm-hmm. And so I had like p- bags of these fucking like cartridges. They thought that it was fucking nicotine or so they left them there. Right. So they get me for this half a blunt that's in my car and some like edibles I had that still had the thing on the package mm-hmm. And I went to jail for like four hours. They tried to charge me with like possession 
of oh everything. My gosh. It took me a year to get that shit dismissed. Yeah. And now it's fucking legal, bitches. It's fucking, it's fucking legal. legal. Shout out to Jersey. Yes. I'm going to the cannabis festival there in August. Like the fact that they have a cannabis festival now That's after you so put tight. me in jail for they weed. Do like have a cannabis festival. Love the transition. It's amazing. Like the leaps and bounds we've gone through and the milestones we've taken in the cannabis industry. I know a lot of us get frustrated because it's like not where it we see it being, but we have to still celebrate roast that mummy before like because it could like it still needs to uh dry out always roast before you choke but um oh and that's a hemp wick around it so you can actually light the hemp wick what i uh, yeah so if you unravel Does it disintegrate? um you, you can mean? it's reusable so if you light the tip of that um like unravel it a little bit here let me help you <laughs> it's all you <laughs> So I twisted it at the bottom, and then if you take this part right here and light this, it's actually a better inhalation process. It's butane free. Oh wow, so instead of getting the butane from the lighter, you're getting it from the hemp wick? Yeah, and it's reusable. Wow. We are fucking holistic in this bitch, okay? <laughs> Bluntly holistic. <laughs> buzz, buzz. <laughs> yeah, I think it's um, it's a blessing to live in a place where cannabis is not stigmatized. Right. And That's why I love Vegas so much. Like, I really couldn't ask for anything better. I got great weather. I, I can know. smoke weed everywhere. I can go buy weed when I want, even though I still support the plug. Shout right. out to you. But... Yeah, I love it. Shout out to the Chamber of Cannabis. Yes. For keeping me poised and connected in the community professionally and helping me grow. They're, they're the plug for me, to be honest. Shout out to Tanya Mason. She founded My Water. And she's also my uh, business solutions like coach. She's my... Spiritual mother, she's amazing. She's an amazing woman in my life. Um, so shout out to her. Shout out to oh, all of you. Like, everybody is so cool. Like, so dope. You know what I mean? They love uh, seeing what I'm doing. They're interested. But they also support in various ways. So um, if it wasn't for, like, people telling me, like, what they go through and me being such an empath and figuring out that people actually had similar issues to what I was dealing with and that I wasn't alone, I wouldn't be able to get here. And people kept like giving me advice as I, I've like gone along the way. So I've never been alone. And it's like, because you guys, you know, we all learn from each other. Yep. So it's nice. You need a team. Yeah. Appreciate you being here. Thank yeah. you so much for showing us the holistic ways of jade yes buzz buzz i'm just so happy that uh i found new ways to smoke weed <laughs> like you know you're like so yeah. a real pothead because you're like oh i found a new way to fucking get high yeah. great <laughs> yes so everybody who has any type of inflammation yep. scars lung problems gut problems skin problems beauty problems bacterial <laughs> we got everything yeah or if you just want to fucking have a new way to smoke and smoke out of something sweet and I, I feel like it got sweeter the more i smoked it like yeah. i could start tasting the honey more like halfway through the blunt but uh yeah hit up miss jade miss jodeci oh i had to ask you about your name so how many people are like is that your real name <laughs> every person i run into um except for non-cultured individuals <laughs> They're like, what a great Jodakai? name. <laughs> that's interesting. I'm like, don't tell me that's interesting. Did you did you ever, like, what did your parents say about why they named you that? Just because of Jodeci? Yep. Okay. Like, that was our group. Gotcha. I'm like, all right. All right, y'all. Until next time, stay healthy, stay faded, stay fit, stay mentally strong. You got this. There you go. Every day is a new day. A new day.
smoke another blunt and move on. So when you want to wash your hands, you can just like use my water. Oh yeah? Yeah. Nice. I thought you were going to put it like on your hair or something. No, I actually, well, I do only use it in my hair, but I also um, use it to get the honey off my hands and it comes in the holistic beauty kit. Oh, this is smooth. Yes. It's like, I didn't even realize if I was smoking or not. Right? Nice. We fixed it. The honey hammock. Yeah. I fucks with this. I like the glass tip. Like, it just gives a different type of, I like, feel so airflow. elegant when I'm smoking the glass but tip, you know? But they're reusable, too. Oh, yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah. So you can keep reusing them, girl. Mm. Now you always have a glass tip. <laughs> just the tip. Oh, <laughs> just the tip. All right. Well, guys, until next time, we appreciate you being here. Joe to see it's been real. It's been raw. We, <laughs> it's been raw, blunt, unfiltered. <laughs> buzz, buzz. It's the honey with the honey. And I'm here to let you know you should subscribe to the faded truth. Until next time. Peace. <laughs>